Hi everyone, Michelle Crawford here with Michelle Crawford Watercolor. And today we're gonna to be painting a landscape value study using just one pigment of paint. So monochromatic value study. And we're gonna come out with this beautiful landscape. Um, you can choose any color for this that you would like. Um, and I'll go through our supplies in a minute, but any paint will do as well. I also have uh, a guest joining me today, Paula Crawford from our watercolor group. She also happens to be my mother-in-law and she'll be painting side by side with me today. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Paula's got a lot of experience with acrylics, acrylics. and a lot of other crafts. <laughs> <laughs> and she actually painted with us live last week, the, the uh, mailbox. mailbox. Yeah, the birdhouse mailbox. All right, so to start the reference photo, um, I put a link to this in the description. We found um, a reference photo and I just put printed this out in black and white. Again, you can use any color that you would like, but this is all about learning water control with watercolor and understanding how value, you know, there's a quote um, I shared in our watercolor for real beginners Facebook group the other day that color gets all the credit while value does all the work. And we're gonna learn all about that today using one color to paint a, a beautiful landscape, with some misty trees. So this reference photo, there's a link to it in the description if you'd like to paint along. I've got an example that I painted the other day and uh, I let Paula pick our color today. Which color did you pick, Paula? I picked this one right here. So this the color comes from our, <clears throat> I purchased the Paul Rubens granulating and layering watercolor set. Um, actually, I found this on Amazon. Really nice set. It wasn't very expensive, but these colors are perfect for layering. Um, and they have some really cool granulating effects. So it's going to be perfect for this uh, project. And the color, this teal color is actually just number 172, the blue and dark green from their granulating and layering watercolor set. If you want to learn more about the Paul Rubens um, watercolor sets, there's two of them. I've got some unboxing videos on the channel. I'll try to uh, link those down below as well. So we've got our paints. We're also painting on today some Paul Rubens watercolor cold press pressed block. I've purchased these on Amazon as well. And so with a watercolor block, um, the paper is glued on all four sides. And then I've just got a generic palette knife that we'll be using to remove the paper from the block once we're finished. So in addition to our, our watercolor paper, we've got some brushes here. We're using craft demo brushes today. I've got a size 10 and a six. I've got a 12 and a six. So just having a bigger brush and a smaller brush. And then we each have a, a flat wash brush. We're gonna do wet on wet today. I've got a Princeton Heritage uh, wash brush. Uh, Princeton you, wash. You've got the Princeton Aqua Elite. <clears throat> Any wash brush will do. Um, we've also got um, our reference photo, pencil to, to just make some reference lines, a kneaded eraser to lighten up our pencil, some tape. We're going to, even though we're using a watercolor block, I usually like to have that nice clean white edge around my painting. And so we're going to be using our tape. And then we've already got our um, watercolor paint in this little palette here. So we're going to be using this color. We've got two jars of water. <clears throat> we'll try to keep, <clears throat> sorry, we'll try to keep one of these clean, one of them dirty. If not, we've got extra jars of water if we mess that up. I sometimes end up with a lot of brown water. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So I always do with acrylics. <laughs> it always looks very muddy. Since we're using just one color, um, I've also just got a couple, these are little plastic dishes I picked up at my craft store. Like, I don't know, they were probably less than a dollar, but we're going to use this to mix up our washes so we can get it darker as we go. Um, and then I've got a spray bottle as well, which is nice to have. So let's get started. Our first step, Paula, is to tape the edge of our paper. So I've got my Holbein soft tape. Again, any kind of painter's tape will do. I do really like this tape because it um, adheres really well. I don't get any paint bleeding under the tape and it tends to not rip my paper when I when I remove it. So I'm just painting or taping a nice white edge. Do you have to do this? If you're using a watercolor block, you technically don't have to tape your paper. 
If you're painting on a sheet of paper, you do want to tape it down to some type of a surface oh. because we're going to be wetting our entire paper and otherwise your paper is going to oh. warp. Yes, mine did the other day when I painted with you. So a lot of times you'll, you can tape it right down to your table. Um, I like to kind of move my painting around as I work. work. So a lot of times I'll tape my paper to uh, a, just a wooden board. Again, you can find it in your craft store or some people even, you can save like the cardboard at the back of your watercolor block. You can tape to that. But today we're just doing this because we like that white edge. Okay. And this is cold pressed watercolor paper. So we get a nice little texture. Um, and it is, this is kind of the budget Paul Rubens paper. Um, it is cotton. I don't know that it's a hundred percent cotton, but I've had pretty good results with it so far. All right. So now we've got our paper down or our tape down. <clears throat> We're going to start painting. So our first step is to just wet our entire paper. We have our wash brush. So you can just tip that right in your clean water. And just start wetting. Um, we could also use a spray bottle to help us out and then move that around. And so the, when you're painting wet on wet like this, <clears throat> especially on cotton paper, you want to make sure everything is nice and evenly wet and you want the, the water to absorb into the paper a little bit. So we'll apply the water on the whole page and give it a little bit of time to soak in. If you get any dry spots, add a little bit more. You don't want it to be overly wet, so you don't want to have any like pools of water or water dripping, but you want it to have a nice sheen. How come it feels like some of it's drying very fast? Well, be, because it's uh, being absorbed into the paper. Um, so maybe we'll give you a little spray. You can move that around. If you're joining us on YouTube um, and you're new to watercolor, uh, check out the Watercolor for Real Beginners Facebook group. Uh, we paint uh, together. It's a great place to learn. If you're a beginner, we've got some group experts in there to make sure we're uh, able to pr provide answers to questions. We pull a different painting prompt every week from the Muse jar. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, check out the group and join us. All right, so are you nice and evenly wet? I think so. All right. So we're going to be painting in layers. So we're going to do our lightest first. Now with watercolor, the more water you add to your paint, the lighter it's going to be. We use the white of the paper as our white paint. We don't really use white paint and watercolor. So we're going to mix up a really light wash of our color. So again, I've got this little dish here. So I would just grab some water in your brush. We've got to activate our paint here. And you see that's a nice, pretty blue color. We're going to put a little in our dish. And then for the first step, we're just going to add a lot of water. Just adding water to it. And the more water, and we've got water on our paper too. Oh, I splattered it on. Oh, you'll be fine. Oops. This paint's really, really great for layering. I think it's gonna be perfect for us. So we're gonna take our wash brush with this light color of paint. And if we look at our reference photo, you see kind of got this moody sky. So we're gonna kind of just drop in some paint, let the watercolor do watercolor a little bit and just have a little bit of fun with it. So start right at the top, drop some of that color in. As you move your brush down, um, the pigment will get a little bit lighter. And this first layer is going to be pretty light. Um, when we take that tape off, you'll have a nice contrast with the white edge. And you can even take some water and just kind of, to get that misty effect, we can like just drop some water in there. We're going to get some cool effects and even drop some paint in different places.
So, I feel like yours is way darker than mine. We'll grab a little bit more paint. What's interesting with watercolor is if you drop water, clean water right into your paint, you'll get something called a bloom, which could be really cool for our moody skies. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just... <laughs> so different. <laughs> and then you kind of just let the, let the watercolor sit. Um, do you go all the way down with it? You can go all the way down. We're going to paint our, our okay. trees there oh, so it won't be seen. But um, sometimes I even like to add a little bit more pigment at the top. And I'll just take my wash brush with some water just to add a little bit more mood to the sky. Can you get too much water on there? Like, you can't have too much water, and you'll notice that like your paint's kind of being pushed away by the water. But mm -hmm. um, again, the nice sheen. We're gonna dry this in between this step and our next one. But no. Whenever you're ready, I'm just playing around. <laughs> this is just this is fun. <laughs> I kind of like those. I think I'm gonna drop in some. Just kind of blots of paint because I like how that will make a moody sky. You can kind of tip your paper. Oh, that's pretty. Sometimes um, at this step, I might just do a quick little spritz with my water bottle and give it an interesting texture or something. But that's all there is to it. We're going to dry. So I've got my Craft It Heat Tool. Help us time warp. How do you know when it's completely dry? Um, I usually feel it, but you can tell, like, see how it's a little bit warpedish. Mm -hmm. Um, it'll the paper will shrink back down and tighten back up. The reason why we're drying this is we're gonna layer, and if we put wet watercolor on top of wet watercolor, it's gonna mix together, and we want to get. But we want to use wet on dry for the next step. And so here you've got some little pools. A lot of times if you end up with, well, if you end up with too much water, you can either use a paper towel to sop it up or you can even kind of dry off your brush and it will absorb the excess water. Of course, you've got your dryer. So a lot of times if you have <clears throat> spots that are wetter than others, you're going to get like the blooms or blossoms in your watercolor where you get those kind of hard edges. Sometimes it's really cool and I really want I that. I say, what if you <laughs> want that? So that's why I dropped clean water right onto my paint in some places so I could get some of those blooms. But if you want a nice even wash, you want to make sure it stays pretty evenly wet. And now that we've got that first layer down, you can take your pencil and kind of draw some layers of trees. I think what we're going to do is we'll do like a misty further away section here. Then we'll do this section and then we'll paint the foreground section. So we'll have kind of one, two, three little sections to paint. So while Paul is drawing, I think I'll start to sketch. I'm going to do this really lightly and then we're going to light, lighten our pencil when we're done too. So I'm just kind of looking at my reference photo and lightly deciding where this tree line is going to be. I'll kind of disappear here. We've got the more, the further away layer kind of right there. And then in the foreground, we have the most trees. So really, really simply drawing that out. I'll show you what that looks like really really loose not you know drawing each individual tree we're going to kind of use the tip of our brush to make some of the tree shapes but we also don't necessarily want our pencil to show through even though we want the reference line so you can take your kneaded eraser and just kind of 
blot up some of those lines so you can see them, but they're not going to show through at the end. Just light, lighten them. Any eraser will do, but I like a kneaded eraser because I can kind of just push into the watercolor paper and roll it to the graphite. Pretty light. I think you're pretty dry. <clears throat> so you should have a pencil. If not, you can use mine. Like, you can lighten it with your eraser. And then, so we had that really light wash in here, which we just added water to our paint, right? At this point, we're going to switch to our, our larger round brush. Um, we're going to add more paint and not as much water because this layer is going to be a little bit darker than our background, but we don't want it to be as dark as the other layers. This. What did you say? You're good. Um, I just added a little bit more paint to my mix. I added more paint than, than water we had last time. So just grab a little bit more pigment and add it to there. Maybe like a brush or two of water. Um, so this back area is really misty, right? It's really kind of not very sharp. You can't really tell where the trees are. So mm -hmm. we want to use water to help kind of soften that. So what we're going to do is take, we've got our line there, and take your paint and just do kind of a, a swoop like that. And then we're going to add water to our brush, kind of dip it on your side. And then you're going to take that water and just soften. If you're using cotton paper like that, so you might need a lot of water. We're just going to use that to touch the paint and soften the edge. We can soften the edge on the bottom and on the top. And this is going to make it look more misty in the, in the background. And we can paint that all the way down to the next tree line. Kind of fill in that little section but ha by having the water we can even take clean water just softening those edges i'm putting water right next to it you can dry off your brush a little bit and then your yeah, basic... too high. how do i well when watercolor is wet if you don't have a staining color you can always sop it back up with paper towel if you wanted to change yeah. your line, you could. Now, this is a really misty area, so you could just use the water to drag it out. You know, you just soft that up mm -hmm. like that. If you want to pick up some pigment, you could always blot it. See how that happens? Maybe even make it look a little more misty tree-like. It's totally up to you. But this is granulating paint that we're using, so you can see how the blue and the green are separating yeah. a little bit. It's really neat looking. I like how you got the, the sharp edge there. How do I get that? Well, let's see, we can blot up a little bit. So it's, if the paint or the paper is wet, then you're going to get a softer edge. If you want a hard edge, you want the paper underneath to be dry. Um, but you can always go back in and add that as well. Okay. Okay, I think that looks good because it looks very similar to our Okay, we'll okay. go with it then. All right, we're going to dry again. Smaller section to dry this time. So I kind of got a little bit of water edge here. Again, you can usually reactivate watercolor. If I just kind of 
add some more wet there. I can take away my hard edge that was in the sky. Now this next tree line, we are gonna have more of an edge. Um, we're gonna use our brush. We're not trying to paint a picture perfect painting. We're trying to make this, we're painting the, the feeling of these trees. So we're gonna use um, our round brush and the tip of our brush is about the shape of one of these trees. Okay, so we're gonna kind of use that. Um, and you got this kind of mist underneath so the trees kind of blend. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint kind of this top line of trees and then we're gonna add water to the bottom to get that mist. It's gonna end up looking really cool. We're gonna use a really technical beginner term here. Bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> we're gonna bloop, bloop, bloop our trees in. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what my term is? What? <laughs> when we paint, when I do painting classes, is smoosh. Smoosh? You're going to smoosh, smoosh it? Smoosh it together. Smoosh <laughs> it. All right. So this is going to be um, uh, even darker than the last one. We're learning how to paint with values. We're adding more paint. You can see that's a lot darker. And I'm going to load up my brush with this paint. I'm just kind of making sure my whole brush is saturated. And to start this tree line, we've got our kind of line there. We don't have to follow perfectly. We're gonna put our holder brush like this. We're gonna bloop, 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 bloop. Just bloop you in a tree line. Grab some more paint, it starts to run out. We got some trees down here too. This kind of tree line goes down a little bit. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And while this is still wet, we're gonna grab some of that water and we wanna make that misty bottom. So we're just gonna add a lot of water to the bottom and let it kind of fade into the white paper. And you wanna make sure that this stays wet while you do it. If it dries, you can always um, add more water. You can paint all the way to the bottom if you'd like. We will dry this before we paint the next tree line, but um, before, you want to make sure you have some of that mist before we get to that next tree line, right? So that's why we're kind of adding the water and letting it fall down. If you feel like you need more paint, you can always add that while it's still wet. Just bloop, bloop, bloop right at the top. This is kind of our mid value, so we're still going to have one more layer that's going to be even darker than this, but just the idea of some old trees. Do you use the tip of your brush? I really like your trees. You, you did a good job using the tip of your brush to get that little tree shape. Okay. And if you do end up with too much paint, you can always rinse off your brush in the clean water right up here and then you can lift with your brush or you could even blot. I do think that this Paul Rubens paint is a little bit staining so if it dries it might be a little bit harder to lift but your misty trees look perfect. Okay now we're gonna dry it again. Okay. Trees aren't perfect. They're not perfectly they, shaped. They're they are not. <laughs> I know. I have got people like they want to do a perfect tree, and and I'm like not every look at they're crooked. They're fuller on one side. They're you know misshapen, and um, when we're finished, they finally see it. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they look at other ones and they're like, oh my gosh, they are. I'm like, if you look at a tree, it is not perfect. There's more <laughs> branches here. It's fuller there. Paula actually um, teaches acrylic painting. Lots of different crafts. Yep. Canvas paintings. Canvas paintings. Wooden door hangers. That's a, I'm doing a lot of those. But this is your second watercolor? Um, okay. Actually, it's my third because I the first one I did was during COVID and um, it was a sunflower that I did and and 
That was my first watercolor. And I, I wish I could find it to show you now. I, I don't know what happened to it. And you um, did your second watercolor and with us last week. Last week, the mailbox birdhouse. <laughs> <thing. laughs> Which I saw she posted it in the no watercolor group. It was really pretty. This time we're going to use our most pigmented paint. We're going to, um, you can switch your smaller brush because these are going to be the most detailed trees. So, um, just want to, oh, and again, make sure you have a nice tip on your brush. It really, you can use any size round brush. That's why I love round brushes because no matter what size your brush is, it's usually pretty versatile. You can get really Good. fine lines, really big strokes. So you're using your big brush or your smaller one for the last the row? But you can use your small one or your big one. I didn't get a lot of detail in my back trees. Your front trees are actually going to be bigger, <clears throat> so I might reverse that. You could use your smaller brush in the background and a bigger brush in the front, but honestly, in my reference photo, they're about the same size, so whichever you're more comfortable with. And then this will be our most pigmented, so we're going to grab a lot of paint. The darkest. I think that's dry enough. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Right. So last time we put down some pigmented paint and then we added the water. If you look at our reference, we've got a little bit of that mist mm -hmm. in between the tree lines, right? So we're going to go right below that and start doing this. And this will be our darkest layer. So we're going to paint the dark all the way to the bottom. And you can add some texture with some bloop bloops. So we're just going to start I'm looking at my reference, just following that tree line. We want it to be the darkest at the top. Make sure you leave some of that white for your misty part. And then we'll just paint these trees right below that other tree line grab more paint if you need to and i kind of like to do this like i'm kind of painting what i went but doing it in layers like bloop blooping on top of my bloop bloops because just, you're gonna have all these trees in this tree line right right now with some paint grab some more you don't want to be dry brush but you want to make sure that you have highly pigmented color Gonna fill that in. I don't want it to be a nice even wash. I want there to be some texture here. That's why we're bloop blooping with our brush. What's fun with watercolors, um, we, we just painted all these layers and then waited for them to dry. And I do want to get a nice crisp clean edge. So I'm gonna make sure I get paint all the way to my tape. But as it dries, um, you can always go back in with more to add again some more like layers. So I'm just gonna drop in some paint so I get some variation. If you wanna lift some lighter color trees, I rinse my brush, I'm gonna dry it on my paper towel. And then you can just, again, use that bloop bloop to add some lighter spots if you want. You can refine your little tree line. Again, this granulating paint, it's not going to be a nice flat wash. See, we're getting that texture. It's pretty, pretty fun to let the watercolor do, the paper towel. do its thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so we've added water to our paint this whole time. The top of this tree line is going to be the darkest part of our painting. So I'm just going to go in while this is still wet with pure paint. And I'm going to kind of like kind of like the look where the top of the tree line is really dark. So I'm just adding it, just dropping some paint there where the top of the trees are. Straight out of the paint palette. Shows like that shadow that you might have because you got the, the misty part in front. And again, as it dries, and I might even just like, I'm not going to dry it completely, I'm just going to hit it with the heat tool just a little bit to start drying. 
you've already kind of got this happening. You've got multiple lines of trees and that's what I'm trying to create. So I'm going to go back into pure paint and kind of start putting a few more tree lines. And look, just one color of paint and look what we've been doing. Doesn't it look like a place you want to visit? It looks like the North Carolina mountains. This is the second time I made this painting and every one of them is different. Um, I think when I first started watercolor and first started painting from reference photos, I was always trying to like recreate exactly what I saw in my painting or in my reference. And now I'm like, okay, take that as inspiration and make it your own. And at this point you can go and refine anything you want. Like if you want to add some other trees in the background, you can always like Take your smaller brush and add, you know, any little details you want. You could um, maybe add just a random little, little non-misty part right wherever, whatever you want to do. Oh, I like that. I'm going to hit that with a little bit of water just to soften the bottom so I don't lose my mist. And really what we did here is we just, not only did we learn about uh, value, we learned a little bit about atmospheric perspective. So if you if you like landscapes, you want to paint some more, and you, you've never really learned about art, I would Google atmospheric perspective. And so it's basically the further away things are, the less saturated they are. And so that's why I kind of like as we painted our layers, as we got more forward in the painting, we went lighter with our or darker with our colors. Um, and then what's in the furthest is going to be lightest in the background. How are you feeling, Paula? <laughs> I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> it's just it's so different. It, it's just so different from acrylics. So it's interesting so get, about acrylics is you kind of paint with acrylics, you paint dark to light, you can layer on top. With watercolor, you almost have to paint in reverse. Yeah, that's hard to get used to because I is. can't go back and fix, I feel like. But I know you can. I mean, you, you can could, go you, back and fix. If you wanted to add white, but, you could do gouache. Um, but, I mean, it's totally up to you. See yourself comfortable with the brush. I've been painting for three years. Maybe four. Three. About three, I think. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna dry it. The last one I did was with a green. And you can see even just the first one, the second one, just the color you choose kind of changes oh, the look whole at that. feeling of the painting, doesn't it? Oh, it sure does. You know what? This would be pretty in purple, too. Ooh, it would night. be. And that would feel more like a night painting. Mm -hmm. This was um, a Daniel Smith green. Another granulating color. I think the granulating colors work really cool for this. Because you get all the textures. <clears throat> I feel like I'm done with mine, so I'm drying it. <laughs> I feel like I should be because I keep playing with it. That's usually the point where you're done. You're, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, one tip with watercolor or the tape when you're removing your tape. So 
if you're not easy, you could rip your paper and then you ruin your whole painting. It's a sad moment. So um, I like to heat my tape up a little bit with my heat tool before I oh. remove it. And it actually like softens up the glue a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to remove. Dry while you're drying. I'm going to remove my tape. And this is the kind of painter I am, too. I'm, I'm a splatter. Yes, yeah, so I'm a, a lot splatter. of times I'll just splat, um, splat, face. splat. I know. If you didn't like that, you could it's always it. put water on your brush and, and reactivate it and move it around. I like it. I like things like that, so I am okay with it. When I remove my tape, I try to keep my hand close to the paper and pull away from the paint. You see, you didn't think that background was very dark until you take oh, oh my the gosh. tape off and see the that contrast. That makes a huge difference. Now I want to go to wherever this is. I'm pretty dry. All right, so heat up your tape a little bit. Just get a little shot of all the way around. There you go. Now remove your tape. And then since we painted on a block, we're going to remove our paper. So with a paper block, there's usually one spot where there's a, a section that's not glued. And I just take my palette knife and you just move it all the way around and it'll remove the paper from the block. Look how pretty that is. Oh, I didn't know that's how that worked. Your little slip right here. Yeah. Oh. Yep, right under the first sheet of paper. Is that only one paper? Yep, it's really thick. Oh, you just my great grandfather was a watercolor artist, and I'm pretty sure that he used to like soak his paper, put it on a board, use the gum tape, and then you cut the paper off. This is kind of like that, but a little bit more modern. Maybe they didn't have paper colored blocks when my great grandfather was painting back in the forties. <laughs> All right, there you go. We have our painting. We have one last step though, Paula. We have to sign our painting. Oh yes. <laughs> so you can sign with whatever you want. I love using a glass dip pen. So I've got glass dip pens in here and then I've got a few different inks. So look at this color. It's perfect for our it is. signing. If we have a light spot to sign in or you could use a darker color. Um, you don't need a glass dip pen. Sometimes you can sign it with just a regular pen or um, sometimes I'll dip this in watercolor. I also like watercolor uh, brush or paint brushes. Sometimes I use, but I'll we'll use the some ink to sign it. So the dip pen, you just dip. Get a little low on this color. I like this color, obviously. And then, where should I sign it? Let's go right here. Oh, that's gonna be difficult to see. Let's use. How about black ink? What do you think? Probably. All right, if you open a drawer next to you, there should be some black ink in there. Here. So we're going to use black because I don't think we'll be able to see the signature. This is just some PH Martin's black ink. Be careful where I put that because one of the things I love about watercolor is the cleanup. 
<laughs> water. You just use water to clean up. The ink, on the other hand, is a little bit different. All right, so a lot of times when I'm using a dip pen, I'm gonna just do a little practice, but you'd be surprised how much it feels just like a pen. Oh, that looks smooth. And so I'm just gonna sign it right here. And we've got plenty of ink on there if you wanna you can practice if you want. Oh. Do I need more ink? I don't I don't have any ink. Did I use it all? <laughs> it looks like it. it looks like maybe it's should. drying. You think it's dripping? It's dripping. You're gonna get a little drip. There we go. Yeah. Look at the beautiful paint. And then with the dip down, you just rinse it off. Oh, look at all that ink in there. <laughs> And a lot more. There we go. Beautiful misty trees. We learned about water control, value, and how to paint something from a reference photo that is our own. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. Well, I hope that you you all like the tutorial. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to follow us. Uh, again, we. Um, uh, post a uh, painting prompt every week in the watercolor for real beginners Facebook group. There's love lots of members in there that are here to um, support you and provide feedback and also answer all of your questions. Um, but don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well so you can make sure to catch up on all our future content. Happy painting!